horizontal motion versus vertical motion, motion in two dimensions, in horizontal and in vertical. Until now, we've learned about horizontal motion apart from vertical motion. But now we're going to see what happens when we combine the two in the same in a unique example. So we're going to study situations specifically in which the horizontal motion is constant. Constant speed, no acceleration. And the vertical motion has acceleration due to gravity, so sort of like free fall. So that includes some of these examples. Um, here, there is a ball moving at a constant speed horizontally on the floor, just rolling. It also includes free fall, which is a ball or something just falling and only taking into account gravity. There's also something called semi parabolic motion, which we'll look at in more detail in the next video. And it talks about something moving horizontally, for example, a ball on a table, and then falling off the table and making this half of a parabola um, until it reaches the ground below where it fell. And it also includes projectile motion, which we'll also be talking more about later, which is the example of a soccer player kicking a ball at an angle with the floor, and it makes a parabola of sort of like this curve. So in this example, as we're going to see later, it's very useful to divide the vector of the velocity into components, as we saw with vectors into horizontal and vertical components. Okay, so when we learned about these separately, we learned the four equations of motion. I don't know if you remember them, I wrote them here in blue. So x equals bt, v equals b o plus at, v squared equals b o squared plus 2ax, and x equals b o t plus 1 half at squared. We covered those before. But now we're going to use one of them for horizontal motion and three of them for vertical motion. So because horizontal has no acceleration, as we said, it's constant speed, we're only going to use the equation that has no acceleration, which is just this one, x equals bt. Now, because the speed is horizontal and we want to differentiate from the vertical speed, we're going to call it Vx. So in this equation, x is the horizontal displacement, Vx is the horizontal velocity, which is constant, and t is the time. The time is going to be the same both horizontal and vertically because time is not a vector. Now, for the vertical part, we are going to have an acceleration, and that acceleration is going to be negative g. So remember, g is 9.8 meters per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity, and the negative is there because the acceleration is downwards. So we're going to use it as negative always from now on. And we're going to use the other three equations, which are the ones that do have acceleration. So again, we're going to put y's in each of the velocities so that we can differentiate them from the horizontal velocities. So this first equation becomes vy equals voy minus g times c, where vy is the final vertical velocity, voy is the initial vertical velocity, minus g is the acceleration due to gravity, that's why we have minus here instead of plus like in this equation, and t is time. Again, time is the same in vertical and in horizontal. In the second equation, we have vy squared equals voy squared minus 2gy. So notice that here we change this x for this y because now the displacement is going to be vertical instead of horizontal. So to differentiate those two, we use x for horizontal displacement only and y for vertical displacement only. So that's y. And the last equation, which is this one, we do the same thing. We change the x for y and we do vot, voyt, so the initial vertical velocity times the time, minus one half g t squared. So g is always 9.8, and we always put the negative in the equation, so we get these three equations. Now all of these variables, all of the horizontal and all of the vertical, except for time, are vectors. So that means that they have a direction. So we're going to use this in this example. 
to the right in horizontal is going to be positive, and to the left is going to be negative. We're always going to take it that way. And also up is going to be positive and vertical, and down is going to be negative. So that's why the acceleration due to gravity, which is down, is negative. It's always negative. So that's what we're going to use, that's a notation we're going to use so that we're not confused. Um, time is always positive because it's not a vector, so it doesn't have a direction. And as I said, the vertical acceleration g is always negative because it points downwards. So in these examples, in, in the first one, where there was constant horizontal velocity, because it goes to the right, v is going to be positive. So vx is positive. The displacement of the ball, since it's moving to the right, is also going to be positive. And the time is positive. In free fall, we don't have horizontal motion, we only have vertical motion. So we would use these equations. And the initial speed, because in free fall, you drop an object, the initial vertical speed is zero. What about the vertical displacement? So the vertical displacement is downwards, so it's going to be negative. The final vertical velocity is going to be downwards too because it's falling down. So the vy is also negative. And the acceleration, as always, is negative. In semi-parabolic motion, it's a mixture of these two. So again, because it's moving originally to the right, the, the horizontal speed, sorry, the horizontal velocity is positive, and the horizontal displacement is positive. It's going to end up to the right horizontally from where it started. So it's going to be a positive um, horizontal displacement. Now the vertical displacement is also going to be negative because it ends up lower or more down than from where it started. And the final and vertical velocity is going to be negative because it's going down, it's pointing downwards. Here, it also happens that the initial vertical velocity is zero because the initial velocity is only horizontal. So the vertical velocity is zero. There's just a horizontal component and not a vertical component. Instead, for projectile motion, uh, there is a vertical component of the initial velocity at the at the start, because there's an angle here, an angle theta, so we need to find the components like we used to do in the previous unit to find the initial vertical and the initial horizontal. But both are going to be positive because the ball initially is going up and to the right, and up and to the right are both positive. So we're going to have a positive initial um, horizontal and vertical velocities. The initial horizontal velocity is going to be equal to the final horizontal velocity because it's constant. So this is the same thing as the Vx, the V is in the equation, and it's also positive. However, the vertical uh, component is going to turn negative because it's going up at the beginning, but from the highest point till the end, it's going down. So the final velocity is going to be um, negative. Now what about the vertical displacement? If it starts on the ground, it goes up and it goes down again, the vertical displacement is going to be zero, as we saw in free fall. If it comes down, it's zero. So in free fall, the same thing happens. If it has reached the ground, no, if you throw something upwards and it falls back down to your hand, the, horizontal, the vertical displacement is zero because it went up and down and ended up in the same point. Remember, displacement only cares about the final point and the initial point. So those are the signs of each of the um, variables that we have in the equations. Now, because we know in semi-parabolic motion that the initial vertical speed or velocity is zero, we can put that zero into the equations for vertical and get other simpler equations. So if we put the VOY equals zero in the first equation, we're going to get that the final speed is just equal to negative g times the time. If we put it into the second equation, and we are going to get that the final speed is equal to the root of 2 times g times the vertical displacement. 
that equation also makes things simpler. And from the third equation, we're going to get that the vertical displacement is equal to negative one half times g times the time squared. Or projectile motions, for the last case that I talked about, for the last example, the vertical displacement y was equal to zero. So we can do the same thing we did here with y. We put the y equal to zero in these three equations and see where it gets us. The first equation doesn't change because it has no y. But the second one becomes by squared equals boy squared. Because we know that the by is negative and the boy is positive, we can get this equation. That by equals negative boy. So the speed at which it comes back down to the ground is exactly the same as the vertical speed at which it started, but in the opposite direction. It's going down instead of going up. And from the final equation, we get that the initial vertical speed is equal to 1 half times g times t. And from that, we can solve for the time. So in parabolic motion, the time is equal to 2 times the initial vertical speed over g, the acceleration due to gravity. So we get these two extra equations. This one we can use in semi-parabolic motion. This one we can use in projectile motion. But both help us solve each specific problem. So um, I'm going to give you a worksheet that helps you understand when to use each equation, the directions of each of the variables, and the differentiation between vertical and horizontal motion.